what we're going to talk about in this example is how we create objects that share parameters. Now we've got a couple of sort of fairly simplistic objects here in front of us. One of them is a teapot, which is just a default standard primitive. Um, one of them is a chair, which is called Box01 because you know, that's what I started out making it as. What I want to do first of all is focus on our teapot here. So if we just zoom in on it. Now you can see that I've got it selected. Uh, well you can see by the rotation here that it's not completely at zero, but that doesn't really matter. You can see by looking on the modify panel here that we've got a segments are four and we've got a radius of 22.8 whatever. If I just change that and make it 20 or even make it 25, just a little bit bigger. You can see that I can change those parameters and I can maybe increase the number of segments as well. That's fine, but that's a single object. What happens if I want to make a copy of that object? Well, there are several ways that I can do that. Let's just zoom out a little way here. So we'll take that and just zoom back a bit. There we go. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select it and I'm going to say edit and from edit I've got this option here clone so I'll click on that and I've really I've got three options here but there's only two that we're going to concentrate on at the moment and that's copy and instance first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click on copy and you notice that our teapot that we've got selected up here its name is teapot 001 and down here the new name is going to be teapot 002 hence the reason why you need to name things correctly when you're working otherwise you end up with teapot 002 or like here box 001 instead of chair I'm just going to click OK for the moment and it doesn't appear as if anything's happened so what I'm going to do is I'll click on my move tool and from the move tool I think actually what I need to do is I need to go to hierarchy and just turn off this working pivot briefly that was part of what I was using earlier on so we'll worry about that later we've got the move icon here and I'm just going to left click and I'm going to move. Now you can see that what we've got now is two copies, two pretty much identical copies of the same object. However, if with our new one, our teapot 002, I select the number of segments and I reduce that back down to four, the original, you'll notice that the copy has a different number of segments to the original. So that's all well and good if that's what I want but I may not always want that so let's take this one here and let's push him backwards a little way and let's take our teapot again and we'll say edit and we'll say clone and this time from our clone options dialog I'm gonna click instance I've got a new name teapot 03 that's absolutely fine for the moment and I'll click OK again nothing seems to have happened I'll take that teapot that's now selected, I'll move it to the side and I'll now change the number of segments to four. And what you notice now is it's not just the new teapot but the original teapot that has changed with the number of segments. They've both got four segments. If I now take the original one and I turn that back up to 12, lo and behold, our new one changes its segments as well. Notice while this is all going on that this one hasn't changed at all. Okay. Notice also that with our original, we have this option here called Make Unique, which is also available in our instanced copy over here. But in our straight copy, where it's not an instance, you notice that that is actually greyed out. And that's because this is already a unique object, whereas these two are not unique objects. If at any point I think, actually, I've placed this object where I want it to be, I now want to be able to change its parameters without affecting anything else. All I need to do is to come over and press that Make Unique button. And again, lo and behold, I'll reduce that right the way down to 2 to make it obvious. And you can see that the number of segments has changed. The Make Unique has become greyed out, this option over here on our command panel. And again, it's become greyed out on our original as well. So, very nice, very simple, very easy, but how's that going to relate to what I'm going to do as my modelling tasks? Well, that brings us on to our chair that we've got made here, which is an editable polygon, and it's one where I have just very, very quickly 
taken a few of the faces and I've extruded them out. There's no need to worry at the moment about how I did that because we haven't got into that bit yet. Just accept the fact that I have. Also please accept the fact that when you're modeling you may well have a room full of chairs. Now it may well be that you're looking at this chair and you're thinking yes that's all very nice and well but uh, I now want to make several copies of this. So let's say I've got four of these. I'll make instances and I'll make a multiple number of copies up to four. The original offset between these two chairs will be used to the offset for every other chair and I'll click OK. Now what happens if we've got these chairs and let's just say moving around our scene I'm going to pick one or two of them up. I'm going to move them around a little bit. Let's just say that they're all sort of slight, going to be slightly facing each other. And maybe there's a coffee table there between them all. There we go. So they're all in a position. What happens if the designer or my lead comes up to me and he says, well, you know, these chairs look great, Stephen. Thanks very much for doing them. But we need the backs to be very, very slightly slanted. If I'd already placed all of these, I, it would make you want to cry. You'd have to go around each one individually. Unless, of course, they were instances. If I just made them copies, then yes, we would be in trouble. But this is an instance. So what I'll do is I'll select my original. It doesn't have to be the original, but that's just the one that's in a nice angle. I'll select the vertices, and I'll select the ones at the back here. Again, you don't need to worry too much about it. This is really just giving you an idea of how this can work for you, rather than just showing you teapots. I'll go to Move, or Rotate rather, and what I'm going to do is what I did before, which was to turn on my Use Working Pivot, and if I rotate these vertices, oh, let's make sure I've actually got vertices rotated, selected. If I actually rotate these now, can you notice all the other chair backs are now inclined backwards? So let's do that again, do it a little bit further. It's maybe a bit much. Let's just come back and make it a bit more subtle. There you go, you see? Now, as I move around and I look at each one of these chairs, let's just take off our working pivot again. There we go. You can see that each one of those chairs, irrespective of the fact that it's at a, the object is at a different angle to the original, all the chair backs have moved to exactly the correct angle that I want them to be. So bear that in mind. When you're using clones or when you're making them, you go edit. Uh, let's have something selected. Edit clone. You can use copy or you can use instance. Copy will make you a unique copy. Instance will make you one that you can edit later on. Don't worry about them all being instances because, of course, from my command panel, I can still, and you can see even though this is an editable polygon, we've still got that make unique option available to us. I'll just press that and it will become a unique object. So nothing to worry about. Before we go, however, Let's just look at one other way that we can create copies that's a lot quicker than going up to the Edit Clone. If I select my object, and I could have Move, Rotate or Scale, but we'll go with the Move tool. I'll have Move selected. I'm going to press and hold the Shift key, and then I'm going to drag a new object out from the original. When I let go, my Clone Option dialog becomes available to me. I'll have it set to Instance again, and this time I'll make five copies. So when I press OK, you can see I've got five new copies made, and they're all the same as the original, and they were made just by shifting and dragging. There you go, you can see I made just one copy. But it's a very quick, very easy way of populating your scene quite accurately, but with instanced copies that will change if you need to make an alteration to the original later on down the line. Again, as I say, if you want that to be an original, you just press the unique and it becomes a unique object. Nice and simple.